Good morning. Maybe with this voice we will start to hear the use because I was starting to run over the stage because I knew there is a use in the room, which I am still feeling I have to be a little bit near to because I don't know if I'm already still past that age. <laughs> welcome, welcome again to everyone, distinguished excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, especially our guests who flew all the way uh, to this beautiful city uh, to Addis, but most importantly, the youth who came from across the world, but particularly from our beloved continent, Africa. Welcome, welcome to this uh, conference. First and most, I want, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the organizing committee, because it is not just uh, a conference that we are in here to gather in this beloved city Addis Ababa. I want to again welcome you to your home. Africa is a home to everyone and Addis is a home to all Africans. So welcome again. We're not just launching a conference today because we are talking about adolescent and the youth. This is a quarter of the population in the world. This is 1.9 billion population in the world is the youth and the adolescent. If we are not listening from this population, if we're not giving our attention to the youth, that means we are already neglecting one-fourth of the population in the, in, the, in the entire world. But even in this room, I'm really happy to see that that one-fourth has been represented. But even more, I would say. I don't know if some are already sitting in the same table, passing that age group, but I can see that that representation is there. So thank you to the organizing committee. Please thank the organizing committee uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Health, but, but entirely from the group who has organized this, I want to say thank you for doing this. Please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating them. Uh, this 1.8 billion population that we are talking about, this is even about the 2024 data that we have, but if you also look at the African representation, it's still the same. It is more than 300, 335, almost 335 uh, uh, million uh, for us. If you come back to Ethiopia, it is even around 38 million of our population is calculated to be the youth and the adolescent. So it is still around the same representation. It is not only at the globe level, but if you come to the African continent, it's the same. If you come down to, the, the, to Ethiopia, it's still the same. So we are very happy to welcome you here, that we are having the conference on adolescent health in sub-Saharan Africa, but also we are celebrating the anniversary of the African Research Implementation in Science and Education, the Arise Network. The network is talking about research implementation in science and education. This group is where we usually think that research, implementation, discussions, ideas have to come out. Thank you, Tofik, for bringing up the idea that we do, don't just have to represent the youth in numbers, just like the ones I did earlier, and just recognize that they have to be in the room. But we need to be backed up with evidence that would inform our policy, that would inform our strategies, and that would inform our next plans that we want to set and all activities that we want to do per country, per region, per each population and group that we set. Annually, if we look at this age group, we also witness that we need that type of a think tank group. Because, because if you look at the, the things that are affecting this population, around 1.2 million adolescents annually die due to pre prematurely die, because we know that we have already passed that age group. If someone dies before reaching to an opportunity to become a minister while being an adolescent or a youth, that is a missed opportunity. So, Annually, we lose around 1.2 million use for a preventable type of day, preventable type of disease. Some are due to non-communicable disease nowadays, sadly, because previously we used to think it is more around accidents, it is more around uh, um, uh, communicable diseases, outbreaks, which, which have already seen, even with the, the recent memories we have as COVID. But this population is being affected by preventable cause of diseases. Adolescent and adolescence is a critical stage, which I don't need to preach to this group, because this is an age group that we see an important physical growth, a growth and cognitive development. 
we see that we have a social development. This group is now having that social interaction in here that will grow up that I had an opportunity to say to brothers, to some of my colleagues who are sitting in the other side, uh, who are already coming from across the world, like Harvard, this type of social interaction that we build is usually set during this age group. So that age group is not about the physical, mental, social, and other growths, but the entire being of a human being that grows to your age, that you will see in my age, that you will see in the older age, that would be important in setting the discussions and the norms and the standards that countries will have. The fabrics, the social fabrics that a country has, is usually set during the adolescent and the youth. This development and behaviors need to be backed up with evidence. So the combination of this discussion that we have about the conference in sub-Saharan African adolescents, but also the discussion we are having about the Arise Network, because it doesn't just come from one place, but a network of think tank groups who are setting what works in this side of the world, what works in this country, and what didn't work in the other country has to come together. So Africa has this great opportunity to set an example to the world that we are discussing. What works in my country, what works in the other countries, like Ghana, Tanzania, a group in Nigeria. We have a team in here who are coming together to discuss what can we do for the youth and the adolescent that we want to see in the future for the world, not only for our continent. Improving the health of the adolescent has been a critical area in all SDG targets. There is no SDG target that we can say will not be affected by a work that we do in the youth and the adolescents. As Tofik said, we need to listen, but we need to take also the stage. When adolescents and the youth, particularly women and girls, I have to stress in that, because if you look at this room, I'm really happy that we have a room filled with a great gender parity, but if you look at the entire stage that most people are given, they don't usually take stage. They don't want to say yes. So I also want to challenge the youth to take stage, to be in the table when they are given an opportunity, but sometimes even to push to ask to take the stage and ask for the table. But for us, who passed from that age group, but even are at, at a great opportunity of giving back and serving our countries, we need to listen from the youth and make sure that they are represented in all the tables and the policies that we set. Ladies and gentlemen, our country, Ethiopia, has set several policies. We recently revised our policy, which has been in set in place for 30 years. Uh, uh, for those of you who are new to the country, our guests, I am still in my fourth, fourth month of being a minister. Welcome me again. <laughs> But I'm, really, but I'm really lucky because we just recently revised our policy. Our pre po previous policy was more set around prevention, which is really important. Prevention has to be a cornerstone of our work, but we also added several other things now, like innovation, digital health, you know, digitalization, new technologies, production in countries. The recent, uh, the ongoing conference that we are having now just across the street, maybe I don't know if you had an opportunity to visit when you came yesterday or the day before, but you are also invited to, to visit tomorrow uh, after the finalization of the conference. But all these policies are intertwined through what did we achieve bef before, what are the things that we can keep, but what do we need to change? Because we took a lesson that we have, the population has changed, the disease burden has changed, the needs of the youth has changed, the needs of our country and the continent has also changed, digital health, technology, innovation are at, at our hands, more, I'm sure, better in, in the generation of Tofik's and Tofik and his group and the team in here than me and the other team that we have in the room. But we have revised our policy. I, I would say that our, we have a rich history of using and developing different guidelines, but we are challenging ourselves now that we don't have to set just in policies or strategies, but we need to implement what we set. During this time, it is also very important to note that we need to strategize our evidences. I don't have anything on my hands, no data, no digital things on my tool. Sorry if you hear any clicks. So if anyone is manipulating from that side, please, uh, please silence. And uh, all these things are really important to take into account that we are, we are on track. 
We have reduced maternal mortality over the past few decades, especially the past two decades. If you look at our data, we have changed it, but we need to do more. The next adolescent and the next youth needs to have a planned pregnancy. They need to plan. They need to have a better service delivery. They need to know when to get pregnant, how to get pregnant. Okay? All the data around sexual reproductive health and other services that has been raised earlier, they need to be protected from things that would hinder them reaching into the goal that they set. But they also have to be supported in setting their targets and goals. But that needs to be guided by what the country needs, but also the globe needs. So there are efforts that we need to recognize. We have recently revised our policy, as I told you, but we need to implement them for implementing them. I don't know how long this policy will stay, but we need to be backed with evidence and research and data that needs to come for shaping our strategies. And we need to have uh, a live data, something that we need, we need to have in our hands so that we have a policy that, it, that needs to be agile and change as needed. It doesn't have to be stagnant that stays for 30 years, but I would be happy if it stays more than 100 years because most countries don't need to change their policy if they set their policies with the need and the existing and the future plan of our country or uh, the, uh, any country. So this have shown us that we need to recognize that the Africa and the Africa targets that we set needs to be backed with the use of uh, our youth and uh, adolescents. And the ARISE network stands out for me as one of the collaborations between the African public health experts, but even experts from Harvard, global collaborators, and we need to be backed with strong evidence that we that would be uh, improving the health of our adolescents, be, be it nutrition, be it development, be it other strategies around the youth. The Arise Network builds on the foundation by our country that shapes the policy and guidelines and strategies, and we look forward to listen from this conference what would come, up, what would come out uh, and what are the highlights of achievement that come from the Arise Network in general. But we also are also uh, filling the gap around the think tank group. We know that we were lacking some think tank group. Probably we had some think tank group, but we didn't put them together. As Ethiopia is a seat for African Union, we have African CDC, we have other hosted cont uh, uh, continental but also global offices in here. So the African think tank group for adolescent and youth health is a timely initiative that I would say that would bridge a gap between this research, policy, and practices. Today, I look forward again to leak and learn from the Arise Network and its initiatives, be it from the work that we do through the DASH and the other nutrition network, the existing and new projects, but new initiatives that we would come, because we don't want them to see it as only documents. We want them to be shaping our policies. So we have also our policy and strategy office our lead executive officer is also among us to listen to what would be the discussions that will come out from here. So I also invite our sister countries to do the same, to listen to uh, this youth group and evidences that would come from evidences, research and policies, and existing and ongoing projects that are interregional and uh, interconnected from the globe. Our government through the Ministry of Health and different sectors and ministries is committed but also more dedicated in improving the health of our adolescent and youth. But I want to take us to see three most important things. One is the power of the youth. We've been talking about it, but we need to bolden it, the power of the youth. The voice that we need to hear, but that would guide our policy, that would understand what are the difference between policies, guidelines, and strategies. We need to have a two-way conversation. The other one is the importance of collaboration. Together, as has been stated earlier, together we can do things. The earlier uh, poem that was read, read talks around together. We need to see, we need to ask, we need to pause, we need to understand what are coming to our generation, but the importance of collaboration is very strong. We need to create a healthier future for everyone, but particularly for the youth of Africa. The needs of action, action that, would, that is guided by research and tangible improvements, tangible evidences, and we probably need to bring more implementation research than ongoing research, and uh, our country, and particularly our ministry, is really interested in this. 
And I'm 100% sure that this conference is a springboard for everyone, particularly for actions that we want to take, and sharing knowledge, fostering our collaboration, learning our culture, what works in one country versus the other, prioritizing policies, creating a brighter future for Africa. And I wish you to enjoy your stay in Addis. Addis is, uh, seems small, but when you go out, you might be lost. So if you get you lost, I'll give some card to someone who's coordinating. So let me know if you need anything. We are around. We are just a phone call away. So know that we are around to support you. Uh, but it's also good to get lost sometime because you'll see that how beautiful uh, Addis is. You came on a very important time in our season. It's our rainy season. This is a time that we plant trees. We are already in that uh, initiative. We are doing our green legacy. Those of you who are in here, also the, collab the coordinating committee, use the opportunity to invite the youth, also the guests, because we have a train to invite everyone to plant their tree. And next time you come, you can challenge us if the trees are growing well. And uh, this is also a time that we, we really enjoy because this is a rainy season. This is a time that we plant ideas that will grow into the future. We're using the use, but also the rain can help us in growing that uh, idea. So I really look forward to hear what are the ideas that come from this entire conference. And may God bless our world in general, but particularly our continent Africa and our country. I hereby declare the inauguration of this adolescent and uh, health, uh, adolescent health in sub-Saharan Africa officially. And I look forward to your stay and coming to the Millennium Hall tomorrow, because uh, tomorrow we have our local manufacturers exhibition closure, and you are all invited. Thank you, and have a pleasant stay. Mm -hmm.